I'm a physician, as I told you, by training, but at the same time, I'm the CEO of Intellistem Technology. Uh, we're a privately held uh, biotech company that specializes in what's called cell vaccines. Uh, now, cell vaccines are a little bit particular, but uh, our, uh, our platform was based on working on uh, 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 developing vaccines for what we call catastrophic diseases. So fast forward, COVID-19 came and uh, everything went into array. We are fortunate that our technology was validated. You know, a lot of people have to start from scratch. So all we did was we acquired the proteins of COVID-19, put them with our platform, with our cells, and within no time we're able to develop uh, a COVID-19 vaccine candidate. Is the moment we acquired the protein and we developed the vaccine, it became a question of delivering a viable vaccine to the public, so developing a therapeutic vaccine. Now, the challenges that we faced are, some of them are related to actually uh, being in a lockdown, and a lot of people didn't realize this, especially we're a small biotech company, so we rely a lot of, on subcontracting uh, and collaborating with other partners rather than doing everything in-house. So the, the, the problems that we faced were, a lot of them were related to supply chain. Like we were facing challenges in actually acquiring the protein of the virus. There's a lot of demand, but we were also facing challenges in getting it delivered. We we're also face, facing challenges in the development because there is materials that is uh, not available anymore. It's on shortage. And then when you order things, it's on back order. So you, you look and, you know, as a scientist, you look at your technology and you say, okay, I need five weeks to develop a viable product ready for testing. But then you put things together and, and those five weeks end up to being extended two months. Now, there is something I mentioned at the time was, as a scientist, it's very devastating, uh, but we, we were lucky to work around it is, when you work hard and you develop something due to that shortage in supply chain, for example, and, and the lockdown, we sent our first batch of the vaccine to be validated by a partner in the States and the shipment got destroyed at the border. Now, got destroyed, we're not blaming anyone. There was delays, they had to be tested, but then there was the assumption that everything's gonna be delayed. So what we faced was that the shipping company is delayed they assume that we're going to, the partner is going to be closed. So there are other delays and, you know, you add a day here from day here, and then you have a, a, a biological product that should be on ice for two, three days, being on ice for five, six days. And then ice dries out and uh, the whole batch has been destroyed. Now we were able to repeat everything, but it gives you an idea with that delay in the development how much extra work needed to be done at that point to restart, re-trigger the process and get back to where we were at. And, you know, when you see people dying on daily basis, you're in race against time. So every minute and every second matters. And to restart things from scratch was a very excruciating, painful experience. Now, I always pose, uh, focus on the positive side of this. The positive side is one, we were able to re manufacture it again so kind of validated our processes we were able to build it to build the vaccine again and uh, if anything we now are trying to be more robust and at the same time accelerate things because we know there are delays going to be uh, along the way so we can deliver the vaccine still as fast as as humanly possible <music>